Okay, I guess it's time for another Graphics 2 tutorial. Uh, this one I kind of want to talk about indexed animation. Uh, this style of animation is it's it's an older technique. Basically, it comes from an era where big sprites took a lot of memory. So the theory was some things like waterfalls and, uh, well, a few water things in general, uh, you basically can emulate by simply cycling a chunk of your palette. Um, so it, it's not an it's not really a solution for things that really need to move around but if you can just emulate an animation via some color changes it's an effect that you might consider um, so let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna just basically be making just a little waterfall example it's gonna be ugly and it's not gonna be anything that that I'd ever use you know seriously but for the sake of a demonstration I think it'll be, work good so the first thing you need to do is, is click the palette button and, and select a chunk of your palette that you want to use for your animation. Uh, we'll use this brown here um, just to kind of show you uh, how you can set a color. So I'm going to choose a dark blue. Again, I mean, it, uh, let's get it right. And this might be a little bit ugly. Uh, that'll be our dark blue. Now we'll, on this end I'm going to select uh, a lighter blue. Now, maybe I'll make it slightly teal. I don't know. Okay. And now I'm going to uh, left click here and I'm going to drag to here. And the spread command here will give us a smooth interpolation between those. Um, and you can also, you know, select other colors and, and as many uh, spreads as you want to get a smooth color range. But I think this will do for now. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the gradient tool and uh, I'm going to right click and you can see cycling. Uh, this basically reverses the um, order of the color cycling. If it's um, black it means it's on. If you, if, you turn it, if you click it and turn it gray it means it's off. This here is how quickly it's going to cycle and I believe there's 16 layers. You can have 16, you can see it moving there, you can have 16 different um, different cycles per image and you don't have to use this whole row either in fact you can just use oops you can use more or less you can only use that you can use that much in your cycle or you can use the whole thing or you can even wrap it if you have a really a uh, lot of I guess frames of animation so we're gonna use this uh, blue here that we've created for a waterfall make sure I'm on layer one or animation loop one um, I'm not gonna mix it basically you can you can smooth the gradient out that way I'm gonna leave it as it as is so what I will do oh and I should also say that this mix um, if I choose a little bit better here you can see this mix is the amount of basically noise it gives you a more organic progression if you mix it a little bit we're not gonna to touch that for this so we're gonna use these colors that I've that have set aside just for this this chunk of the palette now I will never be able to use this this part again for anything that I don't want cycling when this cycles. So we'll select that gradient. And I'm going to draw a line uh, about like that. And then I'm going to click again here. Well it's not a line, it's a gradient rectangle. Okay, now that'll have all my gradient colors and I'm going to select that. I'm going to select with the right mouse button and that will actually grab the brush so I can move it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this uh, kind of a longer longer animation by uh, stacking these. I'm going to go to the brush tool here, brush effects, left click, and I'm going to grab it by this corner. It makes it a little bit easier to see. I'm going to zoom in here and I'll place it there. I'll zoom out by left clicking that again. And I'll select once again and I'm going to use the right mouse button as I select to grab the entire brush. Now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to, oh, let me see if I can just, I'm looking for just a nice kind of watery, kind of a, a oops, almost as if these were drapes of water falling down. You can kind of see how that works. Now I'm going to select this again for a brush. I'm going to right, use the right selection. And then uh, let's basically let's loop our animation right now and see how it looks. So I'm going to right click this. I've selected what we've drawn in and I'm going to set it to oh, about 40 would probably be good. And 
oops that's not what I wanted <laughs> I didn't mean to select the gradient tool I meant to um, just click this here to turn cycling on and you can see well that looks good but it's going the wrong direction so what we have two options we can either select this as a brush and flip it uh, of course that's going to change the shape of this or we can just uh, right click and we can click the arrow the other way and you can see now it's falling down so what I think well, let's see how it looks the other way well I'm going to use the right mouse button when selecting and I'm going to press the Y key to reverse it and I'm going to stamp that down and I'm going to reverse it here again let's see how this looks there we go so now we have the the bright part falling down and since this is a stamp we can you know well not a stamp but since it's a brush we can have a whole layer of waterfall like that and that's all good and fine but it would be nice I'm going to clear the I'm going to clear the brush by hitting delete key it would be nice if we had this somewhat transparent um, so I'm going to select this as a brush and I'm going to restamp this whole thing on the spare page here uh, yeah I'm going to write oops selected the one I didn't want let's undo that I'm going to right click and select this entire thing I'm going to put it on the spare page now and grab it later so I'll hit tab and it's okay if it changes colors because the spare page is on a, a different lay or a different color palette. So I'll hit tab to get back. I'm going to hit the delete key to get rid of the um, the waterfalls. And I'll just say we'll just pretend that um, we have like a stone um, stone wall behind it just for just so I can kind of show you how I would do this if it were transparent. Now I'd go back into the spare page by hitting tab. I'm going to look at the effects menu. I'm going to turn on sieve. I'm going to right click and make sure it's the pattern I want with 50 percent. I'm going to select the transparent color here. And I'm just going to draw over this and it'll make it transparent. Well it'll make it appear transparent. I'm going to select a brush again, right click, drag along. Then I'm going to hit tab and you can see it'll recolor when we go back in but you can see how this would create a waterfall effect. Oops, let me turn uh, sieve off so it doesn't so it can write those pixels so you can kind of see you know how it creates basically we have an entire wall of water falling down so this animation isn't acceptable for you know like animated characters and stuff but if you can get away with something like water or something that has a consistent linear motion uh, it's a technique you can use and um, also, one other thing, if you save this format, it's important that uh, you select this, I believe it's LBM, that will preserve the animation cycle. But if you were to save this like a PNG or a bitmap or any of that stuff, it will not save the animation when you go back in. It'll just save the first one. So it's important that you use the right format. Um, to save this and it, once again this isn't this isn't an animation it's just color cycling and not all image formats um, actually support that cycling so if we come over here a little bit we can actually see in real time the colors that are being replaced in order to to um, do that animation I don't know if you can see this or not if I zoom in a little bit maybe you can see the the transparency a little bit better I'm going to stop it because it tends to kill um, the size of the video, so I'm going to click cycling and turn it off. And we'll zoom back out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial. This is a technique that is kind of old, but if you have a big image and a small space and you can add some animation just by cycling colors, and you can use an, uh, a game engine or you know something that supports that uh, image format, then it's definitely an option. So I hope you guys have a good afternoon and continue to do art.